sir. Thank you all. Today our guest is Professor Dr. Dineshwar Yali Gowda. He is the Professor and HOD of Department of Anatomy, Gula ba Brao Patel Homeopathy Medical College and Hospital, Maharashtra. 26 years of teaching experience. Author of book, 2025 uh, MCQs in Human Anatomy, has published articles in different subjects. Role of homeopathic physicians in organ and tissue donation and body donation at ground zero. Worked as a CCH inspector, as a question paper settler in different universities and MUHS Nasik. That means many students might have cried after seeing his question papers. <laughs> Winner of many hours, I just make a, made a joke. Uh, best NSS program officer 2013 and 14 by government of Maharashtra and Maharashtra University of Health Sciences, Nasik. Samaj Ratna Puraskar of State Government, Mumbai. Dr. D.K. Goswami Memorial Social Work Award, Miraj. Best Teacher Award, Gulabra Patel, HMC Miraj. Best Doctor Award, Swami Vivekananda Medical Mission, Sanjeevani Hospital, Mumbai. And COVID Warrior Award by Government of Maharashtra. Today, he deals the subject importance of anatomy in homeopathic education and practice. We know the importance of anatomy because we are starting with anatomy, our uh, classes, degree classes, we start from anatomy because from itself we can learn the other things. But after uh, I was completed in 80, and, uh, it was in 81. 30, 40 years going because after studying the anatomy, we may uh, we may sometimes detach from anatomy. Sometimes we may even forget the names of the muscles. So it is very important for every day we have to practice and uh, study anatomy because now more and more uh, spheres we can see in anatomy. So we are welcoming doctor. This is uh, for the 45 minutes will be your talk. And after that, there will be a discussion part. You're welcome, sir. Okay, Thank sir. you, sir. You can start. Thank you. Can can you uh, see my slides, sir? Yeah, yeah. It is. Uh, it can be audible. Seen. Yeah, audible. it is audible. Yeah. Okay. Uh, thank you very much, sir. Uh, I am uh, Dr. Jineshwari Eligoda. On this platform, I am coming second time, sir, as the last part, which is I have covered in the first lecture. <clears throat> that is the importance of anatomy in homeopathic education and practice. So I, I could cover the last lecture about the importance of anatomy in homeopathic education. That is the last uh, I have covered. And in this, we have come across the, uh, that is the, what are the education policies which are changed? That is all will be done here. So that we have discussed the almost all the part which is in the last lecture. What are the different uh, education policies which are in, in the education system undergoing? The, those which are we have discussed and what are the new things which are we are going to get those all will be discussed in the last lecture. So my second part will be of the, which is you are going to get, that is the one which is you get, that is the importance of anatomy in the, <clears throat> that is the, in the, the medical practice. So in this, you have to remember, uh, what is the importance of anatomy as uh, it is a part of the study in the curriculum where we have come across the almost all the parts in this. We have come across the many things which are 
explained in the education system, those are the, we get as a, most of the important things are the correlating with the other subject, we have to make the teaching. So that is the one which is, you have to remember. So first one, which is, uh, I am going to explain in the, my lecture where you uh, learned about the, on 25th January, that is the, uh, that is the importance of anatomy in the homeopathic education. So today I'm going to highlight the most important thing that is the one which is the next part of that, which is we are going to cover. That is the importance of anatomy in the homeopathic practice. When the all students which are uh, practice homeopathy, so that time they have to know the importance of the anatomy because when clinically, when they see the patient and uh, apply during that time, they will understand the importance of the anatomy. So this is the one which is anatomy subject. If we make most interesting, that is a integrated lecture with the homeopathic materia medica and repertory, as well as organ of medicine and psychology and pharmacy. So this is a subject which becomes a more interesting and uh, with the anatomy and physiology, we can help for the drug posology and uh, artificial diseases and sphere of action of medicine and alteration of functional level and structural levels. So this is a very important thing, which is we are going to highlight on this uh, lecture day, which is very important to us. So in this, First of all, as we know the our the please unmute sir. So in this, uh, we have come across the vital force governs the organism in the organism. It also choose to produce its signs and symptoms. So in the body part of like organs of the body and all, which we are going to get. So that is a very important thing, which is you are going to see. And this is the one part, which is we are going to cover here. That is sir, the... your uh, share screen option is uh, not working, sir. Please now it is okay. No, 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 it cannot be seen. I think that network problem. Sir, can you uh, make the host? Uh, yeah, okay, okay, just a minute. Yeah, okay. Can you see, sir? We cannot see. Ah, now it is open. So uh, I'm talking about the relevance of anatomy, which is uh, very important. Knowledge of embryology will help us to define the herring's law of cure. And also knowledge of anatomy will lead you from part uh, prescription, which is a necessary to we are going to get as a, which is you get. So that whatever all are the anatomical things which are required during the first one, that is a, a diagnosis of the disease and the importance of the uh, diagnosing the and prescribing the medicine. So relevance of the physiology also very important. And one thing which is you have to remember, even we can relevance of pathological and surgical cases, homeopathy, anatomy, which is a very important. Then relevance of organ remedies, which are very good and which are already prescribed by the our masters 
and those will be in the prescription we are going to get in the repertory. So scope of homeopathy in practice of medicine, that all will depend on the knowledge of the, we are going to get the anatomy. Next one, which is we are going to see the importance of anatomy in the homeopathic practice. So in this, we uh, I have told the, the vital force governs our body and uh, they, that is occupied and some regions of the body, which is it will reflect the, in the form of signs and symptoms. So that we see the many organs are affected. If we have the knowledge of uh, different organs, then only we can see the different signs and symptoms and that will be applied to the anatomy knowledge in the repertory, materia medica and principles of homeopathy. So first important thing is one we are going to see here is that is the uh, organ remedies. So specifically in this, our repertories, we are going to have the many more drugs which are, are prescribed according to their symptoms and signs. That is the one which is we are going to get the one first condition where we can see the liver abscess. There we can have the belladonna, chinium, earth, merck sol, and uh, silicia, cirrhosis of liver, card marine, china, merck sol, phosphorus, and hepatitis. In that condition, we can prescribe the, or we can choose the similimum according to the signs and symptoms, arsenic, bryonia, chilidonium, and heparsal. So these all uh, we can uh, prescribe. These all are the important because if you have the basic knowledge of anatomy, then you can make the important prescription or you can study these all organs remedies when you study the materia medica and uh, when you study the repertory. So this is very important to, I am going to highlight when the, we get the organ remedies affecting the pancreas pancreas affection, we get the arsenic iodum, iris, merc, and noxomica, and pancreatinum. All these will be affecting the pancreas. If the person know and studies the first year, that is the, what is the pancreas, what are the parts of pancreas, what are the functions, those all will be teached in the first year. That will give us the important thing. Then second condition where the inflammation of the peritoneum, that is causing the peritonitis, so in this, you can uh, get the specific or the some important affecting peritoneum uh, uh, remedies are the epis, arsenic, belladonna, and lachesis. Again, we have the spleen, one of the largest lymphoid organ of the body, where we can see the uh, organ remedies we get in the materia medica. Those are the sionanthus, chinium, chinium sulf, perimpos. And the appendicitis condition where you can see the, in the second inflammation of the appendix, where we can very well prescribe the arsenic, belladonna, bryonia, colosin, lachesis, noxomica. And the condition where we are going to get the esophagitis, alumina, alumina arsenic, belladonna, mercor, phosphorus, and naja. So these are the very well important drugs which, which are uh, required and uh, should know and apply the important things during the, their practice. Next comes about the stomach. When we see the stomach, uh, that is the parts of the stomach is studied, teached in the anatomy, cardiac orifices, pyloric orifices, all. And in this constriction and all, we are going to get the car cardiac orifices constriction. Phosphorus, cuprum, ignatia, noxomica, all those things will be uh, prescribed as a one which are affecting the cardiac orifices. Then next going to the pyloric uh, constriction where the stomach is having the fundus body, pyloric antrum, pyloric canal. In that we are going to get the pyloric constriction condition. Cannabis syndicus you can get as a good medicine, chinium, phosphorus and noxomica. Then we have the affecting the tongue, glossitis, apis, arsenic and belladonna where these are the very much uh, prone to have the affection towards the uh, tongue and they are making the glossitis in condition. If you think of the apis and earth and bell, that will be helping to the curing the patient. Pharynx, dysphagia, difficulty in uh, swallowing, that condition we call as a dysphagia, belladonna, cantharis, hyosimus, ignatia, that all will be we are going to use in the during the 
uh, that is a pharynx. So lacrimal sac and dacryocystitis in that condition, we are going to see the hepar, iodum, and pulsatilla. So these all will be, we are going to use as a one of the important uh, medicines which are given in the, our Materia Medica and repertory. When we teach the, in the anatomy, ocular muscles, extraocular muscles, recta and oblique muscles. So those which are affected, that time we can have the medicine in our system of medicine. Carbovage, semisifuga, onasmodium. Then we are going to get the paralysis of these muscles, of the extrinsic muscle, intrinsic muscles of the ocular region. We may have the gelsiumium, phosphorus, all that can be affected, the extrinsic muscles, intrinsic muscles, lacasis, natrum mur, onasmodium, and ruta. We teach the eyeball, eye structures in the anatomy. There, there is an optic nerve or uh, neuritis, in that condition, we can get the belladonna, bryonia, nuxomica, and pulsatilla. Then we are going to have the cornea, corneal abscess. That can be, we are going to use the one of the important medicines of our homeopathy, that is a hepar, calcarea sulf, silicia, and sulfur. Then we are going to get the eustachian tube inflamed. We are going to have the belladonna and uh, capsicum. Mastoid process, where we are going to get in that specifically, we get the caries, aurum met, and nitric acid, and silicia. These are the best remedies where we can use for the uh, mastoid process caries. We have the mid-layer cavity consists the three ossicles, that is, we are going to get as a, a malleus, incus, and staphys. These ossicles are affected, their mid-layer cavity, where we can use the aurum, calcarea, and fluoric acid, hepar, iodinum, silicia, and cephalinum. Then sinuses. Sinuses are those where we are going to see the almost all the important things, uh, frontal air, sinus, maxillary, ethmoidal, and spinoidal. These are the very well uh, highlighted when we teach the osteology of skull and all. Uh, very important, these sinuses which are inflamed, that condition we are going to see the, uh, that is the inflammation of frontal air sinus or these are the uh, air sinuses where these are the air filled spaces in the bone that is the near and around the nose. They make the skull lighter, economic, so that the affected when cold and cough and that time mostly affected, that time you can think of sinusitis, affection of sinus, in that hepar, iodum, calibichromicum, and silicia, uh, all these can be uh, thought for the uh, sinusitis. The next uh, organ remedy where I want to highlight is the kidney. So in this kidney, you have to remember about the almost all the things which is we are seeing the structures of the kidney and uh, anatomy of the kidney where in that we are going to see. In this, you have to see the almost all the structures and all given. In that condition, you have the most important clinical condition in our practice, we are going to get the, that is a stone formation or nephrolithiasis. In that condition, we can have the uh, organ remedies which are prescribed during the stone formation and all. Berberis, colosin, lycopodium, nitric acid, cantharis, and sarsaprilla. Pain in the renal region where you can see the if your patient is complained of the loin to groin pain, and that is specifically gives you the clinical signs and symptoms of the uh, ureteric stone, renal stone, that time you can uh, remember about the pain in the renal region, burning, that we are going to medicine like conite, arsenic, barberis, can and sabena, and uh, sulfur. So these are the things where we can see, get. Then uh, when we teach the reproductive system of male, in that most important, we are going to get as a undescended testis. Clinically, we get in the uh, clinics where the patient come, uh, that is come with the undescended testis, where uh, actually the uh, homeopathic physician should know the developmentally, the testis it develops in the abdomen. Then afterwards, it will descend to the scrotum. So undescended testicles in the boys, we can think of thyroidinum and belladonna and conium and phytoleca. These are the medicine can be thought for the, 
that is the organs which are affected. Then mastitis, most commonly in the mammary gland, we have the abscess and uh, we get the, uh, when we tease the mammary gland, all the structures of the mammary gland and it's uh, all the blood supply and lymphatic drainage we highlight and that will be helping to uh, different patient to diagnose early diagnosis of the cancer and all. So in this, what you can see is that is a, a mastitis condition in the abscess. We are going to have the medicines like uh, bryonia and we are going to get the hepar and phosphorus and silicia. Then uh, female reproductive organ where we are going to get the uterus. In that weakness, as the when we teach the uterus, that time we can see that is the that is the supports of the uterus. That is a broad ligament, round ligament, and the primary supports and secondary supports of the uterus. So we are going to get when they are weakness in the all these supports of the uterus, we can think of there is an uh, occurring of the prolapse of the uterus and all. So that condition, belladonna, colophyllum, chinium, and uh, lilium tick, and sabina, and uh, sickle cor, and sepia. So these are the uh, some uh, important medicines which are given for the uterus weakness. Laryngitis, when we go to the larynx, larynx is a, one of the organ where, where we are going to get the uh, uh, production of voice. And if inflamed, we can think of the argentum, metallicum, arsenic iodatum, aurum triphylinum, drosera, hepar, and spongia. So lung abscess, I will highlight the lung abscess with the diagram in the next slides. And uh, pleural empyma or pleural effusion and pleurisy. And in that, there is a hydrothorax is there. Collection of abnormal collection of fluid in the pleural cavity, we are going to call it then a pleural effusion. In that condition, we have the arsenic epis and arsenic iodatum, Kali carb. All these drugs are given in the our materia medica and repertory. Then when we go to the uh, uh, lung abscess, in that we use, can see the arsenic iodatum and chinium, ars, hepar, iodum, and merc mercurius and silicia. Then next uh, going to the, in the chest region, that is a neurologic, that is a angina pectoris, as very important drugs, we are going to get arsenic, arsenic iodatum, Cactus is there, Simicifuga is there, Cuprum. All these are important medicine, Digitalis, Glonine. All will be the neurological, that is a condition where angina pectoris affected. Then you're going to the pericarditis, inflammation of the pericardium in that condition, acute condition, we have the Epis, Cactus, Digitalis, Calmia, Naja, and Spigelia. So these are the medicines where we can see only this is possible when you study the applied anatomy of uh, all these organs in the first year, then only you can apply these medicines to the when you diagnose the patient. So next condition where we can get the coccyx pain, joint arthritis and all condition where you can see the joint and arthritis condition, you can very well see that is the joint structure, anatomy of the joint, synovial joint, and all the types of the synovial joint, synovial fluid, synovial membrane. This anatomy is teached in this uh, first year curriculum. So in that, the uh, student will, uh, will understand and they will use this knowledge in the application when they choose the medicine accordingly on the symptom similarity. Gallbladder, one important medicine where we can affection uh, felt tori that is the one medicine which is you have to remember and always think of the uh, affections of the gallbladder. Next, when we go to the synovitis, in the synovitis condition where you have to remember about the apis, belladonna, iodum, pulse, rustox, and ruta. Then ankle joint sprain uh, in that condition, carbo anomalous and ledampal, ruta. All these can be prescribed and think of the sprains. When it is the structure of ankle joint in that whatever the ligaments which are medial, lateral and capsule of the, uh, the joint, ankle joint is explained and teach them. When this is a, a sprain occurs, it is a dorsiflexion or plantar flexion, eversion, inversion, all these movements are taking place at the ankle joint. 
according to that the strains are occurring and we can uh, think of the medicine where given in our materia medica that is uh, we have the ankle joint strain carbenamylase ledum ruta so next comes about the knee inflammation we call as a synovitis bursitis housemates knee prepatellar bursas and the other thing which are there those very well we can treat with the these affecting synovial membranes those are the medicine which are we are going to get arnica bryonia pulsatilla rustox and ruta all these uh, very well affecting the synovitis condition bursitis condition housemates knee housemates knee is a enlargement of prepatellar bursas and uh, that is due to the constant kneeling and bending pressurizing the prepatellar bursa causing the enlargement that we can correlate with the housemates knee clergyman's knee all minors knee all that condition we can think of uh, these medicine where we can get as a arnica bryonia pulsatilla rustox and ruta then popliteal space itching we have the lycopodium and sepia shoulder that is a scapula region deltoid pain or rheumatism this is specifically given covered very, very important if you know the shoulder joint scapula region where is the deltoid muscle and what is the pain radiating and rheumatism that condition you can think of the rustox and sanguinuria sicilinum and oxalic acid so these are the very important drugs where uh, we can use uh, these are can be called as a organ remedies or affecting the particular uh, structure of the human body then pain between the scapulae asculus we have arsenic bryonia colophyllum chinium ars all these conditions where uh, we can pain which is between the scapulae so if you know the scapula lower angle of the scapula then only you can prescribe and you can find out the correct similimum then we have the periostitis we have the aurum aurum phytoleca then we have the ruta and rustox condition where we can treat the spina bifida that is a condition where we can have the spinal cord deformities and the defects uh, developmental defect in that condition where we can use uh, the medicines uh, bryonia calcarea fas sorinum and tuberculinum then condition where we go for the next is the uh, one which is a uh, uh, ascites abnormal collection of fluid in the peritoneal cavity that is a condition which we call as an ascites if the uh, student and doctors they know the what are the lay of the uh, peritoneum and what is the uh, uh, fluid collected abnormally in the uh, peritoneal cavity that is we are going to call as an ascites the, the in that condition we have the very well good medicines apis apocyanum and chinium then adenitis this is one of the important uh, complaints where we get in the children's uh, in that children's where we are going to see the uh, adenoids are those where we are going to see the enlargement of these uh, group of tonsils in the pharyngeal region and they are uh, causing the obstruction to the airway so that condition where you can think of the conite apis arsenic iodatum calcarea iodatum so these are the most important uh, medicines where if you have the knowledge of anatomy and applying this knowledge anatomy knowledge to the your clinical practice and uh, that is a uh, gives you the good result next comes about the parotid gland when we teach the in the anatomy the pairs of parotid gland what is the function what is the structure where affecting and what is the important clinical condition we teach that is the mumps that is a that is a enlargement or the inflammation of the uh, parotid gland or the salivary glands we call as in a mumps so that is the, in that condition we can use the belladonna then we have the baritacar phytoleca and pulsatilla then uh, one endocrine gland which is uh, important which uh, thyroid gland and uh, most of the uh, patient which are we are going to see in our uh, clinic that is uh, hyperthyroidism hypothyroidism goiter all these uh, which is relating to the even the uh, obesity as well as uh, we get the uh, emaciation 
so these can be understood very well and those symptoms are very well reflected in our materia medica that is uh, we have the adrenaline epis bell bromium fluoric acid iodum natrum mur and uh, even thyroidinum you can use that is so uh, aortitis inflammation of the aorta this is the largest artery of body where aurum ars is uh, can be used we are going to get one clinical condition where we are going to see the bell's palsy that is a, a important one where there is a uh, that is a paralysis or a, a partially or uh, which is we are going to get the loss of sensation on the facial group of muscles and uh, we are going to see uh, that is a diagnosed and that condition bell's palsy we can use the causticum and gingham mat bone affection aurum calcarea fos ruta silicia sympitum this is all common which is we are going to get in our uh, materia medica that is a bone affections then hydrocephalus which is we are going to see the hydrocephalus in the condition where clinical condition where there is a obstruction of the uh, csf so ventricular system and all this is which is you are going to see that is a, you can remember about the all this is the ventricular system in that there is a obstruction to the csf flow uh, condition we are going to get as a hydrocephalus so we can treat with the helleborus gingham iodum these all can be used for the uh, hydrocephalus condition prostatitis uh, in this condition where we have the subulcer and uh, stapis and tuja these are the medicine can be used for the prostatitis sciatica when we teach the anatomy teacher as an anatomy teacher when the course and uh, distribution of the uh, sciatic nerve in that we are going to see the uh, where it is beginning where it is a course starting from the gluteal region back of thigh and superior angle of popliteal fossae dividing in that condition where we are going to get uh, medicines like uh, colocynth and rustox uh, if the student or the doctor can diagnose this is a condition where there is enough pain along the distribution of the course of the sciatic nerve where it is sciatic nerve is dividing into a tibial and common peroneal nerve so that uh, pain is radiating then you can understand the the important uh, course uh, of the sciatic nerve then you can get the symptoms you can very well prescribe if you are anatomy is of the sciatic nerve you have understood course you have understood you can very well prescribe then we have the uterine displacement the supports of the uterus and in that condition uh, abyss pulse and sepia these can be used then one more important uh, condition where clinical condition we teach in the when we teach the veins of the lower limb that is the most important superficial and uh, we have the uh, deep veins in that superficial and deep veins which are there in that we see the uh, great saphenous vein and short saphenous vein superficial veins deep veins we are going to get the femoral vein popliteal vein and all so the in that condition where calcarea fluor hemamelis and pulsatilla you can use the very well clinically in this condition and uh, this is a condition where you we highlight that is a what is the function of wall what vein is consisting the its uh, uh, wall of the vein and uh, how this uh, walls fails to drain the or pump the blood upwards and this mechanism is leads into the varicose vein or varicose city so if the uh, we teach in the anatomy highlight that is a course of the sciatic nerve walls which are containing 15 to 20 in its course uh, uh, that is we are going to get the great saphenous vein and in the great saphenous vein always there is a one wall which present at the saphenous femoral junction so in that condition you have to think of what is a varicose vein these are the abnormal dilated lengthened and tortuous which is we call as an that is a uh, varicose vein and that condition which is clinically we are going to call that is a varicosity or varicose vein then one important thing this is the one which is uh, your clinical experience just i want to share 
these are the few experts uh, given the opinions on that I am uh, presenting. Some embryological disorders where we can treat with uh, like uh, atrial septal defect, ventricular septal defect by the cephalinum, medorinum and tuberculinum because we have the, all the advanced technologies which is uh, we can have in the diagnosing the in the fetal life. So embryology is the most important and advancing uh, medical system where in the early stages of the anatomical structural developmental defects where we can very well uh, diagnosed and that can be cured. So in this condition, you have to remember the knowledge of embryology is for making the genetic constitutional prescription. So uh, genetical uh, constitutional prescription you can uh, make with the all reports and uh, with the all advanced technology used for the diagnosis. So what is the important here? Uh, we can think of in the some uh, anomalies or uh, uh, developmental defects in that condition, you can think of the first month of pregnancy, cephalinum 1M to 10M can be given. Eighth week, carcinosin 200 can be given. Twelfth week, tuberculinum 10M. Sixteenth week, you can give, prescribe the medorinum. Then twentieth week, sulfur 1M, you can be used. And twenty-fourth week, sorinum. And sometime SOS, you are going to get the pulsatilla and colophyllum. So these are the uh, your experience and uh, your diagnosis in the early stage structural defects. In that condition, you can remember. If we have the knowledge of normal function and uh, structure, then we are able to understand the altered abnormality. So this is the one which is uh, Dr. Kent was an anatomist where he constructed the repertory in 37 sections. So one most important person where the region wise, all the construction of the repertory has been done, that is a CM Bogar and a Bogar synoptic key. This is a very much useful as anatomical, as a Kent anatomist, 37 sections has been made and constructed accordingly. And CM Bogar called in the Bogar synoptic key, all these can be given. So serous membrane is given, bryonia alba is affecting, uh, that is can be very well prescribed Fibrous membrane, ruta, we can prescribe. Mucous membrane affected, Kali bike can be given. So this is the one very important clue or the very important study we are already having in our repertory. So this is the one where uh, different part of the uh, lung lobes, in that we are going to get as uh, we are having the... Okay, sir. So in this condition where we are going... Uh, this is the one which is a uh, upper lobe. Uh, right lung is uh, having the three lobes, upper lobe, mid lobe, and lower lobe. In that condition, you can use the different one, which is a uh, medicines which we can prescribe. That is the upper lobe affected. We can think of arsenical calcarea carb and the mid lobe, which is a calcarea carb, sanguinuria. Then bryonia at the lower lobe, chilidonium, kali carb, lycopodium, and mercsol. Then when we go to the left lung, where the upper lobe and lower lobe, in the upper lobe, we can use the Merxol, Phosphorus, Sulfur, Tuberculinum, Natrum Sulf, Oxalic Acid, and Rumex, Cephalinum. So these can be used in the different prescription made according to the anatomical location or anatomical uh, organ affection. So this is given in the Kent repertory, chest and inflammation, that is the lung this is all sections where we are going to see it. Uh, with this, uh, whatever the few important things which are given, that is, I will highlight hemorrhage from the cerebral artery. We are going to get in the hypertensive patient, hemorrhage, apoplexy. These are the words used and we get in the, that is, uh, in the repertory. So those uh, anatomical related word, clinical related word, if you study properly in the anatomy, then only you can understand and you can get the proper repertory sub-rubrics and prescription of medicine. So lens degeneration, we are going to get as a cataract, cataral, inner ear, imbalance, we are going to get oral vertigo, oral vertigo, middle ear inflammation, otitis media, nasopharyngeal tonsil enlargement, that is the adenoids in that you are going to get maxillary air sinus, abscess, abscesses, antrum, you are going to get Parotid gland, inflammation, or mumps, you are going to get. 
So in this condition where you are going to see the thyroid gland enlargement you get that you can consider that is a clinical condition goiter. And tunica vaginalis, the collection of fluid in the hydrocele, that is a hydrocele. Venous system of lower limb, enlargement, that is a varicose vein. So these are the things where very well given in our repertory. This is only possible when you are going to have the clear and uh, important anatomy study, anatomy knowledge in the, your curriculum. So this is all about the one. It is correlate with the one uh, which is the role of homeopathic physician in organ and tissue donation and body donation at ground zero. One recently, my article was published in Homeopathy for All. That is all relates to the important thing, which is uh, anatomy knowledge only possible when the people donate the body. That is the one we have to here I will appeal also. That was the one which is, this is the highlight of my department where anatomy department, we have to make the most uh, interesting subject. It is a maths like everything needs the correct one so that we have to create the interest in the subject so that you can, this is my few uh, photographs of my department where we have the museum and chart display and departmental activity where we can see and uh, these are the rankers where we can student ranker boards. And these are the charts, digital charts where, and the museum specimen. We have 234 mounted specimen, which we can teach and apply clinical uh, anatomical knowledge. This is a, we have the cadaver dissection hall. This is, and to promote the, all our students, we do the, take the activity of the organ donation. Th 13th August, we celebrate the organ donation day and all by the poster competition student will uh, uh, study the original organ taking in, in their hands. As they have learned, newcomers also, we promote them to understand the, what are the organs donated. So this knowledge, anatomy knowledge is, uh, you have to go on learning with the, uh, till the last. So take home message to all students and practitioners of homeopathy, develop the competency essential for the primary health care and uh, recognize the scope and limitation of homeopathy and to apply the homeopathic principles for the curative, prophylactic, promotive, and rehabilitative primary health care for the benefits of the individual and community. Be competent enough to practice homeopathy as per the medical ethics and professionalism. My concluding remarks will be, that is, uh, you have to see my uh, all videos in the all make the interest interesting that is uh, 200, 212 uh, anatomy uh, my videos are there in the youtube you can get the, all the knowledge any student can uh, get any time knowledge of this so all this department whatever i have shown you just the clips of highlights of my department it is all because of our management our beloved founder chairman prithviraj patil sir our respected trustee Advocate Virendra Singh Patil sir, respected campus coordinator Satish Patil sir, respected principal Dr. Rajendra Mete sir. All they have ex given a excellent uh, renovated department uh, in, in our anatomy department. So that is a very much uh, important to make, create interest in the anatomy, give the uh, highest knowledge of anatomy and uh, correlate and uh, make the competent to practice uh, perfectly with the knowledge of homeopathy that is applying the clinical anatomy to the you have to prescription of your medicine. So thanks to all uh, my uh, international forum for promoting homeopathy and uh, all the MK Sahani sir, Kalyan Swarup sir and uh, Dhanish sir and uh, live a life of hum humanity, gratitude, intellectual and uh, never stop, uh, stop of learning. So promoting body and organ donation so with this, I conclude my today's uh, lecture on that is the importance of uh, anatomy in the education and in the, in the practice. So this is all about the today's my presentation of relating the, uh, creating the anatomy knowledge, applying in the clinical practice in the correlation and integration study of the homeopathic repertory materia medica. So Thank you, sir. this is all about my lecture. Thank you, sir. Thank you, sir. Thank you very much. A good teacher, a good yes. professor, <clears throat> a good, uh, I think that um, whatever I can say, you are a promoter and at the same time you are teaching through online. This is great. Because a teacher yes. like this, 
uh, uh, well studied. But after um, while I see your anatomy, I thought that you are a sportsman. <laughs> you are a <laughs> very nice teacher and uh, good, uh, very nice. Your presentation was very nice. And uh, anybody want to ask any questions? Uh, only two minutes there. <clears throat> Dr. Manoj. Madam? You can ask or you can say what a thanks to Dr. Definitely, we need nice, fine teachers and those who are intelligent enough to apply homeopathy practically as well as according to interest of the time. As Richard Hale rightly said, man is a product of his heredity, upbringing, time and environment. So our time changes and environment changes have to change certain attitudes. You're a really good teacher, a wonderful presentation, must come participate regularly, should advise your students to participate in the IUFPH platform regularly. That will enhance their uh, knowledge, that will help the homeopathy as well as the common man. On behalf of IUFPH and expressing sincere thanks to Dr. Dinesh Sir, Thank you, sir. Thank you, sir. Thank you, Thank you sir. very anything, much, sir. Uh, You want to Any add questions? anything, sir? Uh, only this much is uh, whichever the my topic was the importance of anatomy in the education as well as uh, it is in the clinical practice. So first day of uh, when uh, student takes the admission to the first year, he has to be created and given the good knowledge of anatomy and very well, very easily he can practice homeopathy. If he has the very uh, good knowledge of anatomy, he can apply only when the patient comes to the your clinic for the treatment and this knowledge if you are having that is a very well and good practitioner of homeopathy good supporter of homeopathy good promoter you are the best ambassador of homeopath thank you very much sir thank you sir thank you you are welcome to our platform uh, i'll be there we expect more blessings from you and now yes, doctor uh, here we are concluding our english session and let us go to our Malayala session. I invite Dr. Shaila P. Shaila to take the moderator. Thank you, Madam.